What up, y'all? It's your boy, Mr. Downtown Ray Mel, and you're listening to the Entertainment Report on iHeartRadio, live from Dubai for Friday, July 21st, 2017, delivering some major stories and trends going on in the world of entertainment and beyond. You can follow the show on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram, facebook.com slash the Entertainment Report with Ray Mello, that's R-A-Y-M-E-L-O, on Twitter at the Enter Report, or on Instagram at the Entertainment Report. You can listen to the show anytime you want on iHeartRadio. Just go to iHeartRadio.com or your iHeart phone app, search for the Entertainment Report, and it'll take you to the page. Chester Bennington, the frontman of the Grammy Award-winning band Linkin Park, died in apparent suicide at his home in California Thursday morning. Law enforcement said he was 41. Police told TMZ his body was discovered before 9 a.m. Thursday at his residency in Palos Verdes Estate in Los Angeles County. Police confirmed the report to Variety. Bennington struggled with drug and alcohol abuse throughout his life. He previously told friends he considered suicide over physical abuse as a child, TMZ reported. In addition to Linkin Park, Bennington provided vocals for the band Dead by Sunrise, Stone Temple Pilots, and the live cover band Buckets of Weenie. Linkin Park won two Grammys for Best Hard Rock Performance for Crawling in 2002 and for Best Rap Song Collaboration for Numb Encore with Jay-Z in 2006. Some of Bennington's bandmates reacted to the news on Twitter. On Twitter. Bassist Dave Phoenix Farrell summed up his feelings in one word, heartbroken. Guitarist and keyboardist Mike Shinata said, shocked and heartbroken, but it's true, an official statement will come out as soon as we have one. Bennington is survived by his wife, Talinda Bentley, and six children. Lincoln Park released the album One More Light earlier this year. Hours before the news of Bennington's death, the band released a new video for a song off the album Talking to Myself. Bennington was 41. The members of the Nevada Board of Parole on Thursday voted unanimously to grant O.J. Simpson parole for his armed robbery conviction after serving nine years of a potential 33-year sentence. Simpson had been in prison at the Lovelock Correctional Center since his armed robbery and kidnapping conviction related to some of his football memorabilia. The hearing received wall-to-wall coverage on news stations and on the Internet. During a nearly two-hour proceeding, Simpson deflected blame for the incident that led to his conviction but also expressed remorse for the the decisions that led to the jury's verdict. The former athlete and actor's conviction stemmed from a September 2007 armed robbery at a Las Vegas hotel where Simpson went with a group of associates to retrieve some of his own personal sports memorabilia that he said had been stolen from him in the 1990s. Members of Simpson's entourage pulled guns on the men who had the merchandise, though some of what was taken was legitimately Simpson's property, investigators said. Much of the incident was recorded. Simpson said at one point, I haven't made any excuses in the nine years I've been here, and I'm not making excuses now. I should have never allowed these alleged security guards to help me when they were only trying to help themselves. Since his imprisonment happened more than a decade after his scandalous acquittal in the brutal 1994 knife killings of his ex-wife Nicole Brown Simpson and her friend Ron Goldman at her Bundy Drive condominium in West Los Angeles. Simpson, a star player at the University of Southern California in the 1960s and one of the NFL's best running backs in the 1970s for the Buffalo Bills was a highly popular figure prior to the killings, owning to uh, a number of appearances in television and films, including The Towering of Infer- Inferno in 1974 and the Naked Gun trilogy. For years, he was also a main pitchman for Hertz Rent a Car. Debate over Simpson's role in the double murder has continued since his 1995 acquittal. Thursday, former Los Angeles prosecutor Christopher Darden encouraged the former athlete to confess what he did. He advised on NBC's Today show, Admit Your Sins. We have yet to extract from him the punishment that he deserves, justice ain't killing two people and butchering two people and getting away from it. If the board grants Simpson parole, he would be released from prison on October 1st. Darden said, if you are really reformed and rehabilitated, you are really remorseful. If you are really a born-again Christian, then let's move this discussion forward, noting that he would like the parole board to ask Simpson if he's guilty of the murders. A new trailer for 20th Century Fox's upcoming Kingsman, The Golden Circle, was released prior to the film's panel at San Diego's Comic-Con. The two-minute red band trailer for the sequel to 2014's Kingsman, The Secret Service, features series protagonist Gary Eggsy Unwin, played by Taron Egerton, traveling from England to the United States after his secret spy organization is destroyed. After traveling across the pond, Eggsy teams up with Halle Berry, Channing Tatum, and the Kingsman's American cousins, the Statesmen, led by Jeff Bridges' agent Champagne. 
Car chases, brawls, and gunfights ensues as Eggsy and the Statesman attempt to save the world from the villain, Julianne Moore, who was responsible for the destruction of the Kingsman. Egerton, Barry, Tatum, and Bridges will join fellow stars Colin Firth and Pedro Pascal, as well as will be screenwriter Jane Goldman and co-creator of the Secret Service Comic-Con book Dave Gibbons for the Comic-Con panel on Friday. Mark Strong and Elton John will also star in the Kingsman The Golden Circle, which is set to be released on September 22nd. The trailer for Guillermo del Toro's The Shape of Water has gotten more than 1.5 million views since it was posted on YouTube Wednesday. Set against the backdrop of a Cold War era America circa 1963, the sci-fi fairy tale is scheduled for theatrical release December 8th. It stars Sally Hawkins, Octavia Spencer, Michael Shannon, Richard Jenkins, Michael Shirkbarg, and Doug Jones. The synopsis accompanying this week's two and a half minute preview video says, in the hidden high security government laboratory where she works, lonely Elsa played by Hawkins is trapped in a life of silence and isolation. Elsa's life is changed forever when she and co-worker Zelda, played by Spencer, discovers a secret classified experiment. The clip shows mute Elsa defying orders and connecting on a human level to the mysterious underwater two-legged creature her employers keep housed in a tank at the lab. Season 8 of The Walking Dead is to premiere October 22nd on AMC. The zombie apocalypse drama wrapped up its seventh season on April 2nd with Rick Grimes, played by Andrew Lincoln, and his ragtag bang of survivors prepared to go to war with the villain Negan, played by Jeffrey Dean Morgan and his countless minions. Production on the show's Georgia set was temporarily halted last week when a stuntman was fatally injured falling 25 feet from a balcony. Britain's Bloomsbury Publishing says it plans to release two new Harry Potter-themed books this fall. The company said on its Facebook page Thursday, we're thrilled to share the covers for the two tie-in books accompanied by the hashtag BL Harry Potter exhibition at the British Library this October. The message accompanied the cover images of two volumes, Harry Potter, A Journey Through the History of Magic, and Harry Potter, A History of Magic, the Book of the Exhibition. The books are related to J.K. Rowling's blockbuster Harry Potter fantasy series, which contains seven tomes and inspired eight movies, as well as the Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them film franchise. Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone, also known in the United Kingdom as Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone, is the novel that started the phenomenon in 1987. The British Library's Harry Potter Mag- a History of Magic exhibition is to open on October 20th to coincide with the original book's 20th anniversary. The library's website says, Ever wanted to delve into divination, ponders the peculiarities of potions, and even un earth how to care for magic creatures now you can step into our exhibition harry potter a history of magic and discover bewitching items and artifacts in an experience inspired by subjects taught at the hogwarts school of witchcraft and wizardry we unveil rare books manuscripts and magical objects capturing the traditional of magic folklore and mythology often found in literature you'll learn about the myths and folklore that underpins the themes and imagery brought to the life in the harry potter stories which provides a backdrop for Harry, Ron, and Hermione's world of wizardry and witchcraft. British Library Archive material will sit alongside drafts and drawings from Bloomsbury Publishing and J.K. Rowling's personal archives. Carla Gugino and Michelle Hussman are to star in Netflix's 10-part series based on Shirley Jackson's novel The Haunting of Hill House. The contemporary thriller will be executive produced by Flanagan, Trevor Macy, Justin Favley, and Daryl Frank. The project marks a reunion between Gugino and director Mike Flanagan, who recently completed work on the Stephen King's adaptation of Gerald's Game, also on Netflix. Flanagan tweeted, so thrilled to be working with at Carla Gugino again. Uh... He also, the actress added, ditto at Flanagan Film. Very excited to be a part of this new incarnation of Hashtag The Haunting of Hill House. Let the games begin. Academy Award-winning actor Forrest Whitaker will guest star on Empire Season 4. The 56-year-old actor confirmed in a tweet Thursday that he will join Terrence Howard and Taraji P. Henson on the Fox series. He wrote, so excited to join Season 4 of At Empire Fox with its amazing cast, it's going to be fire. Whit- Whitaker will play Uncle Eddie, a charismatic music icon and bonafide hit maker who gave Lucius, played by Howard, his first radio airplay, according to The Hollywood Reporter. The character will step up for Lucius at a critical moment in his re- rehabilitation, earning Cookie's thanks. The multi episode guest arc will reunite Whitaker with Empire creator Lee Daniels, who directed the actor in his 2013 movie, The Butler. Daniels confessed in an Instagram video Wednesday, I don't know why, but 
but I always get nervous the first time I shoot it, I'm sh- I start shooting again. I'm so thankful to God that another season of Star and another season of Empire. I'm so excited. The season four premiere, which airs September 27th, will see Lucius make his first appearance following the explosion in Las Vegas. Demi Moore will return to guest star as a nurse, first seen in part two of the season three finale. Television radio personality Ryan Seacrest will return to host the American Idol Revival. The 42-year-old star confirmed on Thursday's episode of Live with Kelly and Ryan that he will host a reboot of the reality competition on ABC. He said of the show, it's going to be the best time, it's going to be a lot of fun, we're auditioning soon. Seacrest hosted American Isle through its original 15-season run on Fox from 2002 to April 2016. Seacrest said in a statement, it's generally hard to put into words what American Idol means to me. I'm so grateful for the show and all the career and life opportunities it's allowed me to experience. It's been an incredible journey since day one. He confessed to be asked to return this year at my new home at Disney ABC is an honor, if not a bit surreal. Paige Davis is to host a rebooted version of the TLC home improvement series Trading Spaces. The network said in its uh, website Wednesday she's drilled to jump back into Trading Spaces and bring some exciting rooms renovations to a neighborhood near you. The show's producers are now looking for neighbors to take part in low-budget makeovers in each other's homes in the Los Angeles, Atlanta, and Baltimore areas. The program is to return in 2018. It initially ran from 2000 to 2008 with Davis hosting from 2001 to 2004 and again in 2008. The 2018 installment of the Pirelli calendar features a cast of entirely black models and celebrity, including Nupita Nyong'o, RuPaul, and Naomi Campbell. British fashion photographer Tim Walker shot the 45th edition of the Tire Company's annual calendar, which was styled by British Vogue editor Edward Enifold, featuring the all-black cast in an Alice in Wonderland setting. Enifold told the New York Times, inclusivity is part of the conversation that it has ever been before, but it goes far beyond black and white. It's all about cr- all creeds, all colors, all sizes, and people just living their troops. A lot of this is all about digital giving people voices in a new generation who refuses to, comp- to compromise and wants answers to the questions that matter to them. Given the state of the world we live in, sometimes I think we all feel like we've fallen down the rabbit hole. For me, a retelling of Alice for the modern world was a perfect project, particularly one the cast fell into place. Pirelli shared a photo of RuPaul posing in front of a thorn, a playing cards, as as the Queen of Hearts while flanking by Dejaiman Hunsu and Ducky Thought. The cast also includes Ada Achek, Adwala Abdullam, Alpha Dia, King Osua, Little Yadi, Sasha Lane, Sean Diddy Combs, Slick Woods, Thando Hopa, Wilson Irima, Whoopi Goldberg, and Zoe Birido. Each model was assigned a character from Alice in Wonderland, with Ducky Thought taking on the role of Alice, Combs as the royal beheader, Goldberg as the royal duchess, and Woods as the mad hatter. Pirelli shifted the focus of its calendar in 2016 when it hired Annie Leibovitz to photograph women that inspired her and continued the trend for 2017 by having Peter Lindbergh photograph older actresses with minimal makeup and digital retouching. Combs said, I move mountains to be part of this. It is a chance to push social consciousness and break down barriers. For some many years something like this would not happen in the fashion world so it feels like being part of history and playing an active role i want to lead by example Rapper Tigger said he warned Rob Kardashian about dating his ex fiancee Black China. The 27 year old rapper opened up Thursday on the Power 105.1 radio show The Breakfast Club about Kardashian's split from Black China and his own breakup with the reality star sister Kylie Jenner. He said of Kardashian, I told him what the play was. I told him what he was going to deal with, like when I was with her. I told him, be careful. I was just with her for three or four years. This is what you're about to deal with. Tigger split from Black China in 2014 and was dating Jenner when Black China started seeing Kardashian in January 2016. The rapper who shares four-year-old son King with Black China says the 29-year-old model is a good person but comes with drama. He says she just got a different mentality. She's really a good person at heart but she's been through a lot in her life and she really didn't have people to help her guide her. Uh, He added of Kardashian, I knew Uh, someone like him ain't going to be able to handle somebody like her. He's coming from a whole different world. You don't know how she moves and how she thinks. When you're in love and you don't care what nobody else thinks, you just 
going to love blindly. Black China confirmed in an interview with People this week that she finished her on again, off again relationship with Kardashian. She obtained a temporary restraining order against the star last week after he shared naked photos of her on Instagram. The model told the magazine, There's no turning back. I'm glad I'm relieved of Rob, but damn, why did I get to relieve this in this such way? Tegas also said on The Breakfast Club that he split from Jenner about seven months ago, explaining that public attention to their romance took a toll on their relationship. The rapper said, We started off as friends and then we got in a relationship. It ain't a losing thing. When you make a decision to not be in a relationship with somebody, y'all just make that decision, y'all split ways. I have love for her, but I'm not in love no more. He also explained, I think the main thing was there was a lot of people, a lot of outside influences. She's younger than me, so she's dealing with perception. For her growing up, how she grew up, image and perception was everything. In a related story, fans gathered this week to see Kylie Jenner's wax figure unveiled at Madison Tussauds in Los Angeles. The 19-year-old reality star was honored with a statue Tuesday at the museum's Hollywood location. Jenner confirmed her figure sports the silver Bamian dress that she wore at the 2016 Mela Gala. She wrote on Instagram, thanks at Tucson, L.A. for this amazing honor. Go visit my girl tomorrow in Hollywood and see the actual dress I wore to the Met Gala last year. The Keeping Over with the Kardashian star followed up by posing a selfie with her statue. She told fans she pranked her family with the figure while attending the unveiling ceremony. She wrote, I made her FaceTime my whole family, fooled everyone. Beyonce fans were outraged this week by the singer's wax figure at Madame Tussauds. Social media erupted after new photos of Beyonce's statue emerged following its move to the Wax Museum's New York location. Fans says that the statue looks nothing like Beyonce and also accused the museum of whitewashing or lightening the singer's skin tone. Others opined the figure more resembles Lindsay Lohan, Mariah Carey, or Kesha. One person wrote Tuesday on Twitter, This is not Beyonce, this is a poor man's Mariah Carey with some Lindsay Lohan mix in No, No, No. Another added the next day, it's a good thing you're not talking about Beyonce because this white woman is definitely not her. Madame Toussaint responded to the controversy Wednesday in a statement to TMZ. The museum said our talented team of sculptors take every effort to ensure we accurately color match all of our wax figures to the celebrity being depicted. Lighting within, uh, lighting within the attraction combined with flash photography may distort and misrepresent the color of our wax figures. Katy Perry says she's always loved Taylor Swift despite their long-standing feud. The 32-year-old pop singer maintained Tuesday on the Australian Morning Show Today that she wishes the 27-year-old pop star nothing but the best. She said, according to Entertainment Tonight, I love her, I always have. We've had our differences, but I just continue to say God bless her on her journey. Perry shared similar sentiments in an interview with Ariana Huffington on the Thrive Global podcast in June. She said at the time that she was ready to let go of her bad blood with Swift. The star explained, I forgive her and I'm sorry for anything I ever did and I hope the same for her I think it's actually like I think it's time there are bigger fish to fry and there are real problems in the world she also added I love her and I want the best for her I think that you know if we both her and I can be representatives of strong women that come together despite their differences I think the whole world is going to be like yeah we can do this Perry previously confirmed on Carpool Karaoke with James Corden that her conflict with Swift started over backup dancers. She said three dancers left Swift to work with her after she returned from a hiatus. The singer claimed, I tried to talk to Taylor about it, and she wouldn't speak to me. She says, I do the right thing any time that I, it feels like a fumble. It was a full shutdown, and then she writes a song about me of Swift's saw single Bad Blood. I was like, okay, cool, cool, cool. That's, that's how you want to deal with it. Swift has yet to respond to Perry's recent comments. The pop star has kept out of the spotlight as she works on her sixth studio album, but returned to Instagram last week to promote Selena Gomez's song, Fetish. And finally, music legend Stevie Wonder reportedly married his longtime girlfriend over the weekend. The 67-year-old singer tied the knot with 42-year-old Tamika Robin Bracey at a lavish wedding at the Hotel Bel Air in Los Angeles, according to People. Babyface was among the couple's famous guests. A source told the magazine, it was a beautiful wedding. The ceremony was lavish and very romantic. There were celebrity guests, including John Legend. Uh, the insider added of Wonder, family is very important to Stevie, and all of his kids were involved in the wedding. Steve, uh, Stevie Wonder, who 
who shares two, two children with Bracey, including two-year-old daughter Nia and seven other kids with previous partners. The Sun reported legend Usher and Pharrell Williams performed for Wonder and Bracey before the singer serenaded his bride, who is also mom to two other children. So as said, Stevie's musical pals each got up on stage to take turns serenading the couple, much to the delight of the other guests, and Stevie got up to sing for his new bride. Wonder was previously married to late singer Sarita White and fashion designer Kia Miller. He last released the holiday compilation album, The Best of Chris's Fantastic Relaxing Songs, in November. And as your entertainment report for Friday, July 21st, 2017, I'm your host, Mr. Downtown Bray Mello. I'll be back on Monday from London to deliver some major stories and trends going on in the world of entertainment and beyond. You can follow the show on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram. Facebook.com slash The Entertainment Report with Ray Mello. That's R-A-Y-M-E-L-O. On Twitter at The Answer Report or on Instagram at The Entertainment Report. You can listen to this episode or any previous episodes of The Entertainment Report anytime you want on iHeartRadio, just go to iHeart.com or your iHeart phone app, search for the Entertainment Report, and it'll take you to the page. Everyone have a great weekend. Good night, and God bless you all.